What's up YouTube? In today's episode I'm going to show you some basic how-to uh, maintenance on your Subaru. Whether it be uh, turbo or NA model, it doesn't really matter. Um, all the EJ series are pretty much set up the same way. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a basic throttle body service. And uh, by removing the airbox off the throttle body or the intercooler, um, that gives you enough access. You can you can spray in there and do some good cleaning. If the engine you're working on is a MAP based engine, so it runs on uh, manifold absolute pressure, it's very easy to run the engine and run throttle cl throttle cleaner through it while it's running. Uh, you'll clean a lot of the gunk that builds up in the intake, uh, which not very much will build up in there usually, but uh, all the intake valves get a good washing. Um, a lot of deposits can actually come free and just go and burn through. Um, if uh, it's a, a mass airflow based car though, uh, it's very difficult to get the car to run sometimes, sometimes they just won't. Um, but you can just do the basic service without actually spraying stuff into the throttle while it's running and get pretty much the same results as you're looking for out of the throttle cleaning because that's what you're going for. Uh, usually throttle response and idle is affected with the throttle cleaning. Um, that build up a carbon that could surround the, the throttle plate, it can restrict that little bit of airflow that would normally go through there and uh, ECUs are programmed to see that air coming through. Uh, if it's completely caked and clogged, well, uh, you're, you're, the IEC might do a little bit of overtime duty cycle just trying to regulate idle and pull in some more air that it's not getting from the actual throttle. So basically I'm going to show you the footage from the WRX when I had the intercooler off and I did the service on it. Uh, and then uh, we'll get into a fuel filter after that. Yeah, just doing a basic throttle body service without the intercooler on. Um, we, we can't really run the vehicle because, uh, well for one I have the whole air box out of it, but the mass airflow sensor is not really going to direct air from the turbo into the throttle. So. Um, we're just going to do a quick little cleaning w without running the vehicle and putting cleaner through the system. But I'll take a rag and wipe any of the, the blown through oil out of there. So you just take your ex-girlfriend's uh, toothbrush and open up that throttle and just go right around the bore where the plate would rest. This one's not too bad. A little bit more on there. Do the top side. And a little more. And just go across the edges of the plate. A little bit on the face. This bottom edge you want to you want to see that shine. And then uh, direct the can right into the throttle and try and spray it into the intake manifold. It uh, Most of it will evaporate but when I go to first start it there will be a little puddle in there and uh, might have to actually hold the throttle open a bit just to get some added air in there and discharge the extra fuel. But it should look relatively clean when you're done. Have some nice smooth operation, no binding. So you can see uh, throttle body service is pretty uh, straightforward, not a lot to it. You just need to uh, clean it. So next I'll show you the fuel filter. Uh, it's fairly straightforward as well. The lines on this car gave me a lot of hard time getting them off. Uh, probably a few minutes just on one hose, just trying to work it back and forth, get it off. Uh, so sometimes they can really stick on there. I would have said the one that I was taking off was original and uh, it's probably like 15 years old. So uh, it's something that a lot of people just, they, they don't do with a tune-up and um, they think, well, it's not really causing a, an issue or a problem and in most cases it's not uh, but I have actually worked on cars before that created like very 
little to no oil, uh, fuel pressure and found the filter to actually be the problem. Um, that's not something that's checked as often anymore because uh, fuel, fuel injection and adapters have changed and no one really bothers. They just go straight for a fuel pump, call a filter at the same time, and that's what you get. So this is the clip of me changing the fuel filter and just showing you how basic it is on a Subaru. It's easily located right up top of the left strut tower and uh, in other cars it's underneath or it's the back side of the engine bay on the firewall somewhere. Uh, Subaru just made it so accessible it's something that should be changed because it's so accessible. Uh, I only have the washer bottle out of the way because I was doing the valve cover gaskets at the same time. It's not something you need to remove. Um, so yeah, here's that. So I'll start here. There's a little clip that actually retains the other hoses and it wraps around one of the steel lines coming off the filter. So you can just kind of unsnap that like that. And then underneath here there's a, a little spring latch that you can let go. And when you pull it around, you can actually just take it right off, set it aside. Two stainless steel clamps, be careful of pressure. Yeah, the lines are usually really tight on them and in really old cars sometimes you'll end up having to cut that hose and install a new fuel injection hose. So all I'm doing is taking a right angle pick and just trying to get it between the hose and the, and the steel line and just kind of walk it around in there a little bit to loosen up the hose. I still don't want to turn off. Using these these uh, hooked pliers, you, you got to be a little careful on the rubber hose. You can tear it very easily. But you can see with some effort, it will come off. And you won't have to replace the hose. That was tight. So you want to take this rubber insulator off the old filter and slip it onto the new filter. And the filter's marked in and out. Uh, so in coming from the tank and out going to the engine. The hose is uh, always a lot easier to get back on. You want to make sure you get them on far enough that the clamps will be past the little barb on the on the on the tube. And get your clamp back on. So as you just snap the latch back on, the filter will stay nice and snug in there. And pull your clamps back up. Just reinstall this hose retainer, just like that.
and you're done. So yeah, it's just two things you can do to your car that are rather cheap, uh, easy to do, and should go along with an ign ignition tune-up if you're doing so. Uh, you'll see fuel mileage and performance out of a car if just doing those two things. And at the same time, those with emissions regulations, uh, that's, that's, those are items that are easy to change and that can improve your chances of, of getting through that e-test. And uh, fortunately, I don't have to do that shit. So yeah, there'll be lots more how-tos coming in the future. So if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and share your comments and questions down below and I'll see you in the next one.